Hi all, um, so I'm just going to start recording the video for the hairpin lace cardigan that I showed previously. Um, so some pretty basic supplies, you need a hairpin lace loom, a pair of scissors, a crochet hook, this is a 5mm crochet hook because I'm using Allen weight yarn, um, some markers to mark off the stitch count at the size. It's not necessary but I find it easier so just scrap yarn. If you've got ones that clip around this then great but none of my stitch markers actually clip around the par, par? pole. <laughs> um, and obviously the yarn you're gonna make with it. You won't need all of this um, but it's the only yarn I've got in enough of is the bigger balls so um, I will put the exact weights down in the description when I finish so you know how much you will need um, but that's all you'll need for getting started now you're going to need five of these 120 loop ones that's five of them but you only need four of the 50 loop ones now the 50 loop ones and two of the 120 loops will make the shoulders and arms of the cardigan and then the remaining three 120 loops makes the rest of the body of the cardigan. Okay, so once you've got all of them done, come back and um, continue watching and I will show you how you do the first round around these loops before we start joining them together. Okay? So, see you soon. Okay, so you need your hair pin lace loom, obviously. Now, my one, as you see, is a reasonable long one, but they don't need to be this long because if you get this fully full up, even when it's squashed down, you can just pop off the ends because this is how you'd remove it anyway. These just pop off, and you can slide off some of the loops, and then in between the loops, slide it back on and you can then continue working in this space so if you've got a shorter one it doesn't matter the important thing is the width that we're going to set to get the correct size strips so I have my 5mm hook this is 5mm because I'm working with Aran yarn um, if you use DK you can use a 4mm um, chunky obviously you use a 6mm match a hook size to your yarn to start with that just makes it easier to work with now I've got some scrap yarn this is purely for stitch markers along the sides um, to mark the count of the loops you don't have to do this but I find it works easier if you do have them especially if you're like me and you lose count going up and obviously a pair of scissors to cut your yarn now, when it comes to working with a hairpin lace loom, when someone says you need a strip with 50 loops, what you need is 50 loops on this side and 50 loops on this side. Most of the time when someone gives you a loop count on hairpin loose, lace, it's counting one side and the other side will be equal. There is more complicated patterns where this will be different. Um, but for basics, let's just keep to the equals. And some people will count both sides, but generally you just count the one side. Okay, so for this project, we're setting the bars at four inches apart. I don't know if you can see that if I come a bit closer. Um, we just zoom in for you a minute. So here we go, let's say that four inches apart is the width. And now on mine, that's the outer two edge holes. And you can see there are four more holes here. So you can change the width to multiple different ones. You don't always have to match them. This one could be put over here for a really small one. Or you can have them both in here for a slightly larger one. So there's all different sizes. But for now, we're sticking it four inches apart or as close as you can get on your loom okay so to start with you obviously take a yarn and like you would do with any crochet you want a slip knot 
So I always like to leave a long tail so it's easier to weave in in the end. So just make your slip knot and pop your hook in. So it's just like you would normally start. And then what you want to do is take the yarn on the underside of your loom. So as you can see, both strands are on the underside and the loom can pick up without touching the yarn. Now, it's going to be easy when you're doing it in your hands, but as I'm doing it on a table for you to see, it's going to be a little fiddlier for me. But you should hopefully be able to see what I mean. So, what you want to do is you want to make sure you're always working down the middle of these two, so you put your stick there. So get this, and you want to work your stitches in the middle space. So to start with, because this can be a little loose, I tend to hold my tail across as well, so that you hold it in place in the middle there. And then what you're going to do is just yarn over, and you're going to pull through your slip knot, so you're through. And that there is actually your first loop created. So now we need to create the second loop, which will match it on this side. To do that, you need to turn your hook so it's now facing the opposite way. So your hook end is down here, and the end of your hook is this end. And then what you're going to do is just flip it so it's now on the other side of your loom. See, your yarn is now across it. And then you're going to turn your loom. So you're literally just going to turn the loom around. Keep hold of your yarn tail just for a little while. See, so you've got this completed one that you did just now and now here's the start of your next loop. This is your working one, the one you're holding with your fingers. So what you need to do is you take your hook and you want to go through this loop you created. And you can see this thread here is on the top of your pole. So you want to go through so that same thread is now on top of your hook. And just like a normal single crochet, you've gone through the loop, so you yarn over and you pull back through. And then, what you want to do, now you've got two loops on your hook, like a single crochet you normally would, you yarn over and you pull through the two loops. That's now secured that one and created two loops. So your original loop and your new loop is now secure. So again we're going to have to turn the frame, the loom, to get this to create the next loop. So remember we turn around the hook then we flip the hook so it's now behind that loop and then as you can see the yarn is underneath so we turn it around, just pull my tail out of the way and there we are now creating the second loop. So there's the first loop you created and once again we need to secure this to create the second loop on this side. So this is the loop that we just made and remember we want to go so the hook is underneath that same strand. So like a normal single crochet we go through, we yarn over we pull back through, then we yarn over and we pull through the two loops. Once you get a few more done it gets a bit more stable and you don't need to worry about trying to keep this in place so much easier. But for the starting with it's a little fiddly so it's an idea to keep this so you try to make sure you keep all your stitches down the centre of your frame. So I'll show you one more time. So we turn the hook around, flip it so it's now underside so as you can see we've had it on top where we've turned it around we're literally just taking that tail end there and we're pushing it down and flipping it so it now is on the other side and that's put the yarn on top and the hook underneath and then again we've got this one under here you want to feed your yarn as you turn it so that it flips over and here is the first hoop on this side and here is where you're creating the second loop on this side. So now we need to 
secure it. Now here is your two loops. This is your bottom one, the first one you created. So you now don't work with that one at all. We're now working with this one. You always work with the last loop you created on that side. And you can tell if you've worked it because this top thread is actually not secured. It's secure on this side, but on this side it's just loose. There isn't a stitch holding it in place. And it's a bit hard to see on camera, but believe me, in real life you will see what I mean by that. So, again, remember, not that bottom one, but this top one. I'm going to go through the loop, so we're going underneath that one. Yarn over, pull through, so you now have two loops, yarn over and pull through. You've now secured your second loop on that side and you have two loops on this side. So we're going to keep going until we've got 20 on this side and 20 on this side. And then you can put your markers in. Now, a good plan is you now have two on these each side and this is the side you worked last. Just pop a marker on the underside at the very bottom of all your stitches. So when you're doing your 20, you can tell your last stitch for 20 should be on this one. So always count how many loops you got on this side. So you can just pull that down so it's at the bottom like that so it's out of the way but it's just easier for you to spot which side you should be working on. Okay, so we went that side, remember the yarn's on the underside here, so we now know we need to flip. So we twist and we flip and then we turn over the loom. Your thread towel, just pull it down out of the way. As I said, once you're holding this up properly and not on a table, that towel won't keep getting in the way. So pull down the loop that you're not working with, so that one. We're working with this loop, remember, to secure this one, which is the third one on this side. So we're going to go under that loop again, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over and pull it through. Then turn your hook, flip it so it's now on the underside, and then turn your loom. So you now have three loops on this side and we've got two secured and one loop we're working with on this side which if you remember we need to secure with that thread so we're gonna pull down two loops out of the way this time and we're gonna go underneath that top loop yarn over pull it through yarn over and pull through two and then just take your hook Flip it around and flip around. You'll find that you'll end up with a fluid mo motion once you've done this enough times that you'll just automatically be able to work your way through. Just going through, around, automatically doing that and flipping it. So going under that stitch, yarning over, going through and just flipping that under. And turning over. I'm going to zoom out so you can see me doing this from a bit further away because it might be a bit easier for the movements for the minute, okay? Okay, so I'm going around, yarning over and through. We're just popping that through and flipping it over. So in the top one, pulling it through. So you're creating your single crochet. So you'll see, if you're like me, you'll find the easiest way for your hook instead of going all the way around. It's just to slide it across this bit and it automatically pops under. Because when it gets to the end, it just pops. And then you can just hook it around like that to turn. And it becomes a fluid motion. So hopefully you can see me doing that from further away. But we're just sliding it around. And we're just going to keep doing this until we've got the correct amount on 
the loom. So that's what we're going to keep doing. Okay, so I've just finished a 50 length, a 50 loop strip. And as you can see, I have the starter loop to tell me which side I was counting on. And then here marks the first 20. Then up here, this here is the next 20, tells me I have 40. And then I've got 10 above it, which gives me my 50. By having these in, this makes it so much easier to keep count of how many you've done. Um, it saves you having to recount the entire strip every time. So these are much easier and it's really simple to put in. Um, all I do with the scrap of yarn is I fold it in half, pop it under, and then put, hold out these two and put the ends through and loop it on and give a pull and slide on. And that's just a really simple way to keep count of how many you've done. So I'm going to finish this one off now, which is really simple. It's kind of finishing off like you would normal crochet. So I've just done the last stitch and now I'm ready to either turn and do the next stitch or finish off. And I'm going to finish off. So all you're going to do is yarn over and pull through and then cut the yarn. Leave enough tail to be able to weave in the end. So cut the yarn and just pull it through. That's there, and then you're just gonna pop off the end and slide off. And you can just pop this back on, and this one is now ready for your next strip. And that's ready to go again. All of these literally just lift off because they're out of the way, and there's your 50 strip. Completed. Right, so the next thing we need to do is to start the edging to be able to join them. So, I've already done one to show you what it'll look like. This is one of the 120s. And this is the first part of the edging before we can join them. And all we've done, as you can see, you've got your rows that you were doing down the middle and your loops and then in here they're just single crochets in each loop and it's done all the way around and on the edges here we've done eight single crochets inside the loop and then straight over to eight single crochets in the loop there and then we slip stitched to join it and then I've woven in my end you can weave in your ends at the end but I like to weave in as I go so that I don't have quite so many ends to do so Let's show you with the another one. So I've got another 120 here because we're going to start by joining two 120s. And that's 120 loops, remember. So what you want to do is make sure you've got everything straight so that there are no twists in it when you join all the loops. Especially the ends here, you've got to really have a look and make sure there's no twists. Good way to work to check for twists is if you look closely at each loop, you'll find that this one joins in to the next loop. So if you just do that on the loops and follow along, you can then find the end. See, that's your tail end, which means that one belongs on that side. So we're going to just pick any end, it doesn't matter which end you start with. So in this case I'm going to join in this loop here, which is the end of this side. And I'm also going to hold this tail within the loop along the edge so that I actually join the two together as they go. So first thing we do is you get your new strand of yarn and make your slip knot as you normally would you want to pull. again make sure you leave a good enough towel to even the ends then you're going to pick up the loop you're working on that's 
move some of this out of the way so you haven't got so much distraction and you can just see what I'm working on then. Okay, so we want to hold the tail end of that new yarn within the loop as well so that we can work that end in as we go. So we're holding the very last loop here and we're going to put eight single crochets in after we slip stitch. So we're going to join it and we're just going to slip stitch so it's joined so that we've got somewhere to slip stitch into at the end. So now we're going to do eight single crochets. So that's one. And we're just going into this first loop. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. And eight. So now we've done eight into that very end loop. So if I lay it down, you can see now in the very end loop there, and that's the very end loop of the other side, which we will go into when we finish. So the next thing to do, turn it around, keep these ends going along the edge because that just keeps them woven in. And if you have a look at your next loop, now remember if I said you follow along that line, it'll take you to the middle bit which tells you your next loop and you want to make sure you go into that loop so it's not twisted so it should be straight and not have a twist which it tends to do, can you see the twist there? so you want to go in here so that you make sure there's no twist and then just hold your ends over so you can go in weave them in and then we'll do a single crochet in that loop. Just the one single crochet in that loop. And then again, we're going to look for the next loop. So follow it down. You can see it goes to here. Put your hook in there and pull it up so it doesn't twist. Helps if you don't put a yarn in the wrong place. <laughs> and then we're just going to single crochet into that loop. Once it gets a bit more stable, it will be easier for you to see. So, again, we follow that line down, leads us to the middle one, tells us that's the loop we want to go in, and that is straight. What it's doing is joining all those loops together in a straight line. So this is what we're doing all the way along. So we just keep going. Remember, follow the line down, see where it joins, put your hook in so you make sure that it's straight. Move that one out of the way, you can see it's straight. And now you don't have to weave in your ends as you go if you don't want to. It's just something I prefer to do. But we're just gonna keep going along, always go into the loop from the bottom and pull it up because that way you know that it's straight because if you go in for the top like that you can see I've got a twist on it, it's not straight whereas if I go in from the bottom I've got it straight so you always want to go in from the bottom and try not to have your yarn follow you along <laughs> my yarn ball is trying to chase along So we're going to do this all the way until we get to the end and when we get to the other end we're going to do eight single crochets into those last loops on this end just like we did at the beginning. And you see how it's coming along starting to have them all come out straight. Okay, so I've just completed down one whole side and we're about to start going on the other side. Now how you know you've got to the end and you don't need that hoop is though they are joined here and here, the best way to look at it is to look where 
this leads and this leads to a hoop loop on this side so as remember you, I said you always follow around to the next stitch and as you know that this one leads to the next stitch you know that one belongs on that side so it can be a little fiddly but if you just remember when you get to the end if the next loop leads to a stitch on the other side that loop belongs on the other side so I've done my eight single crochets in here so you take that loop which is partly in this side and you just give it a little pull so that it's more to this side and then you take your end that's there if you've got one you'll weave that one in like we did with the other side so all we're doing I just grab my yarn it's the same as before we're going to single crochet into that loop so just make sure you hold it in place like that and then you're literally just going to go from the eight you've done this side straight in to that loop and start your first single crochet of the eight in there so now you've started in the next loop and that's now secure and will stay like that okay so that's one two three four five six seven and eight so you've done your eight in there and your eight in there and you can see now that's all the way across we've got this one they're all joined out now so now we're going to go down this side okay so there's this one side completed we're going to go along this side so remember all you're doing is looking for the next loop so follow it down go in from the bottom and pull up and there's your next loop that is not twisted so you're just going to hook in and do one single crochet in that loop follow it down to the bottom and a single crochet in that loop and we're just going to do this all the way along until we get to the other end and I can show you how to finish off this one okay so as you see starting to get all of your strands ready for joining so just go all the way along one single crochet in each stitch remember just go in from the bottom and you'll make sure the stitch isn't twisted okay and you do that on every single one and that will give you your nice straight edge as you go this is just bent as you join them they will get even neater on the press um the weight on them will help even out the stitches and make the loops more straight okay so i'll meet you back when we get to the end of this one okay so we've done down the other side and we need to join to the end here so i've done my eight and we're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we did hopefully you can see that there's the eight and we're just into the first one we did we're just going to slip stitch into it so put your hook through the hole pull yarn through and through and then just on the first one you'll want to yarn over and snip the thread so that that's now finished but as I've already got one ready what we're going to do is continue on so as this is the second one we can actually keep going and join the first two without actually cutting the yarn what we're going to do is slip stitch across to the eighth stitch so just going to go all the way across here Okay, so you can see we've slip stitched to the eighth stitch, which you look, we've got the first loop here, which has its stitch above it. You see, and we are in the one stitch in front of it. 
just want to see if I can adjust the lighting to see if we can sort this focus. Be right back. Right. I've changed the lighting, but I'm not sure if it's helping much at all, so I'm really sorry. But yeah, if you can see, we are in one stitch before the stitch that's above the first hoop loop there. That's where we're starting from. What we're going to do is take your already surrounded and completed 120 strip and we're going to join it to the 120 strip that we've just done. So I'm going to have to zoom um, um, go a bit out further so you can see on this because I'm getting a little more space. Move my scissors. Okay, so we've got one completed 120 strip here and one just completed 120 loop one here. Now we're going to, as you remember, we are in one stitch before the loop and that's the same stitch we're going to want to join into on this side. Okay, so you just look for the loop and the stitch above it and then you want to go into the one stitch before it. I don't know if we can go a little closer. Might be see. So we're going to do chain three, join it there, then chain three, join over here. Okay. Okay, so let's just do our chain three. So that's one, two, three chains. And now we're going to find that stitch that's just before the loop and we're going to slip stitch into it. So we're just going to pull the yarn around and in and slip stitch. Okay, that's done the first join between the two. Now we want to chain three again, so one, two, three, and we want to join in to this side because we've just joined into this side. But what we want to do is see where we went in last and then we want to miss a stitch and so we want to skip the stitch and then go into the next stitch. So we went in that one last, so we're going to skip that one and go into this one. And remember, we're just slip stitching in and then chaining three. One, two, three. Now we'll go on to this side because we've just done this side. We're going to go on to this one. So if you look where you went last, and then you skip the stitch and slip stitch into the next one. I'm going to do this all the way along. So we're just going to chain three, skip a stitch and join in on the opposite side to the one you've just joined each time. And this will join the strips together. Remember we're working with 220 loop strips to start with. And this is forming the back part of the shoulders and the arms, the sleeves of the cardigan. Remember, just chain three, look where you went last, skip a stitch, slip stitch in, chain three again. Ooh. And I just lay it out. You can see there's your chain threes where you're skipping a stitch on each side and this is going to join the entire strip together so I will continue doing the strip all along chain three skip a stitch join chain three slip stitch into it skip a stitch and join okay so remember it's always slip stitch into your stitch and then chain three go to the opposite side skip one stitch and slip stitch into that one and you'll create the zigzag joining the strips. Okay so we've gone all the way along and we've done our chain threes skip one slip stitch chain three all the way along and where you want to finish is where you like where you started so you find the last loop and you go to one stitch before it so you're within the eight stitches. So once you've 
join that up on both sides so you finish in the same place on both sides that gives you your straight edge you're then just going to finish off like you would normal crochet so you're going to yarn over hold on my thread has split sorry there we go so yarn over pull through snip your yarn make sure you leave enough room for towel so that you can weave it in pull it through pull it tight and that's your first done so if I just come out again so you can see that's the first 120 loop one strips joined together so that's what you've got so far now the next step is to do the 50s which is the front of the arms so you're going to need to take your 50s do your single crochets all the way round and then we will join them onto this strip and all we're going to do is start in the same place so you're going to start one stitch before the loop and then you're going to do the 50 which is just a slip stitch chain three slip stitch chain three skipping the ones all the way along and you'll have 50 on this side and you'll put the other 50 on the other side and in the middle there'll be a little bit that's not been done and that's the neck hole for the cardigan so this is the back of your shoulders and the length of your arms and when the 50 is done that's the front over the front of your shoulders and your chest area so we'll come back once we've got the next 50 ready there you are right so this has now got the 50 loop strip joined on to the first 220 strips as you can see we've started at the very end and we've gone across and what you get is 20 loops gap and then you get the next 50 loop it's along there so that one's also all joined so when you've joined your two 50 loops on you should have a 20 loop gap between them which is your neck hole so the next thing to do is to join another two 50 loops so we'll have another 50 loop here and another 50 loop here so that we match having two in front and two behind on the top of the cardigan so if we just go off now and join the next 50 loop now remember you take your loop you make sure it's your strip side you make sure it's untwisted and then you single crochet all the way around with eight single crochets in each of the last two strips so you have 16 single crochets across the entire strip and then you do a chain three slip stitch skip one stitch chain three and join up just like we did here where we chained three we slip stitched in and then we chained three and we slip stitched in and that's what we did for the whole of the other two joins we're going to be doing the exact same thing for these joins so you're going to join that one onto there and then another 50 onto the other side and then we will be joining these to create the sleeves so let's just get these last two 50s added on to each side okay so we've now joined the remaining 50s as you see so we now have two 50 loop strips on this side and two 50 loop strips on this side which is the beginning of the front of the cardigan so we've got our neckline we're following here so now we need to create the sleeves and we do that by finding the join line between the two 50s and the two 120s and folding it in half and these will create the sleeves so it just joins along there see so you'll do the slip stitch chain three skip one slip stitch chain three skip one in 
the way we join these, we're going to be doing it by joining the 50 to the underneath 120 strip so that they create the actual sleeve. But we don't want to do the whole 50 strip, we actually only want to do 25, so half of it. Because if we do 25 on this sleeve and 25 on the other sleeve, you'll leave the flap here and that's the beginning part of the body and you'll have a from this end all the way around the back to, and up through the other side of the sleeve that we've created will leave us 120 loops to join the remaining 120 loop strips that we got to create the rest of the cardin cardigan. So start at this end and you're going to do your chain 3 for 25 loops and it might be an idea if you just get some markers to mark out and count the 25 loops. So let's do that shall we, if I can just grab that up. Okay so to mark the 25 loops the best way to do is as you can see each loop there's a join in the bottom and this is going to be the best way to mark it out because it takes you to the stitch. You could count across the top, it's, I find it easier to just find the solid lump at the bottom. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 and 25. So that one there is your 25th. So if you go up you can see that there is a stitch just in it. So just put your marker in that stitch. And that is just above, whoop, we're in the right one there shall we? There, it's just above your loop and that will be the correct place, there you go, sorry, to do it. And you'll want to do the same on the bottom row so that when you join them you know to stop at this point and have the remaining ones unworked. So yep, just join the bottom one to the top. Remember it's just a chain 3, I can start it off to show you. So come back out a bit for you. Okay, so I like to start with the bottom layer, I find it easier. So like usual we're going to find the stitch before the first loop and slip stitch into there. And then we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to take the top layer, so the 50 as we've just worked into the 120 strip, and we're going to find that same stitch, so the one before the loop, and we're going to work into there. So we slip stitch and chain three, one, two, three, and then remember we're back onto the 120, so we're going to skip a stitch and then slip stitch in. And then chain three, back onto the top, and we chain, we've done the chain three, so we skip a stitch and we slip stitch in to that stitch and chain three. So work all the way across until you get to your marker, and that will create your sleeve. And then do the same on the other side, and then I will show you how to start the strips to create the rest of the body of the cardigan. Right, so we've now joined the sleeves. So as you can see, it's done along there. I can show you. There you go. But what we've done is we've left half of it off. And we've done that on both sides, so that sleeve's completed, but we've got this half not done. And if I come out a little more, and now you can see this is the beginning front of the cardigan. So this is the back, and then these little flaps here are the front. And so when we do the next strip, we're going to be doing the 120, we start here the end of this strip and we're actually going to go down and around it and then where we joined in for the sleeves 
we're going to go over that join and then along around the back again over the join where we join the sleeves and then follow it back up and around to that tip so basically it's one long strip that just goes straight around you just have to create a little join here that leaves a tiny little hole but it's no bigger really than the holes left by the cross stitch maybe slightly bigger but it's fine and nobody will notice because it's under the arm so let's join the next 120 strip oh well, I thought I'd show you what we do when we get to the join for the underarm as you'll notice when we're doing our um, skip one we have got the skip one and that takes us right into where the last join was. If we skipped one and skipped one here straight over to where we should be, it's actually going to leave quite a large hole. So what I do is instead of skipping one, I actually work into that last stitch and into this stitch and then the continue on where you should be going for the slip ones. Skip one side. So you will continue with your normal breaks on this side but just for the underarm, don't skip one, work into it and do an extra set of chains. So you do one lot into this one. So I've done my chain three. So we're just going to slip stitch into that last stitch of this section and chain three. And then we're going to go and then skip one on this one into here. Chain three and then do what I just showed you to do go straight into that stitch on this side chain three grab your next one which will still do the skip one on this side chain three remember as we're doing this one, we don't skip on this one because it's where we're joining it. Chain three, and then you'll continue your proper pattern of chaining um, and skipping a stitch. So just in this section here, as you can see, we've done our skip one and then over to the other side. But then when we come back, instead of going straight over, we've gone into the stitch right next to it chain three and done our normal skip one, chain three and then gone in the stitch right next to where we joined, chain three, skipped one, chain three and gone right into the stitch next to it again. So those two and those two are next to each other, no skip, creating a much smaller hole. Okay, carry on finishing to the end. Okay guys, so we've now got the first of the 120 loop strips attached forming the body so as you can see here's the sleeves and here's where we just joined the last strip so we're creating the actual cardigan your underarms as I showed you have a slightly bigger hole but it's not huge and as it's underarm nobody would notice you could go in to this one the actual chain um, and do one into there if you wanted a smaller hole but I, I wasn't really bothered by it so that's a personal choice but it's up to you but we have now got the beginnings of a cardigan so the next task is to add the two remaining 120 loop stitches and all we're going to do is start here and just join it all the way along the bottom, all the way. So it's just basically one straight line. That's all left. You can't quite fit it all on camera, I'm afraid. But, so it's just one straight line all the way across. And we're going to join it the same way we've joined all the rest with the slip stitch, chain three, skip a stitch, um, and slip stitch again. So it's the same method. And if you do that for both of the last two remaining strips, so you'll put this strip here. Remember, single crochet around the edge first and then the next strip in there. And then we will start on the edging. So just go along and join your last two strips. 
Okay, so we've got the last 220 loop strips on. So that's the base of your cardigan now finished. So now it's a matter of doing the edging. Now it's really going to be quite simple for the edging. Um, it's basically a kind of shell um, which will go all the way up around the back all the way down and then all the way around so it's just one straight line you'll be um, following there's no stopping and starting on this section you'll also do the same edging on the sleeves so that you have a nice pretty edging on the edge of these as well now the edging is really quite simple I'm just going to continue where I left off when I joined because that's all you need. You don't need to come off and start in a corner. You might as well just continue and have one less end to fill it for, um, to sew in. If you have joined, um, have finished off, don't worry. Just join in to one of the ends anywhere. It doesn't really matter as long as you're along the edge so that you can carry on doing this. So let me just zoom in and then I can show you what you need to do next. Okay, so this is where I finished the join and all I've done is I've slip stitch into that chain three space on the end where we just finished. So I finished here and I've just slip stitched in there. And that's just to get me into an area that I want to start the border with. So the border's gonna be really simple. We're just gonna chain three on two, three, then you're going to skip two stitches, so we're in this stitch with the chain three, so you want to skip the next two stitches and go in the third stitch, which is about the middle of the chain eight we've done on the end. Just going to single crochet into there. So what we've done is join in to there. And you're gonna chain three again. One, two, three. And then you're gonna skip two again. So skip two stitches, go into the third. And single crochet in. And you're literally gonna do that the whole way around. So you're gonna chain three, skip two, chain three, skip two, all the way around. So again, we just chain three, one, two, and three, skip two stitches, go into the third, and single crochet into that. So chain three, skip two stitches, go into the third. You want to do that all the way around until you're back where you started and you'll just slip stitch back in where you started. And this is the first baseline for your um, edging. So you'll do all of this around and then I will show you what you want to do in each of these chain three spaces. Okay, so I'll meet you back when we've got all the way around. Okay, so when you've got all the way round with your chain threes, single crochet, chain three all the way round, you're going to begin by having single crocheted into your first one where you finished off, and then you're going to do double crochet, six double crochets into the next chain three space. So that's one, two, Three, four, five, and six, and then sorry, get me yarn untangled. Okay, and then in the next chain three space, there you're going to want a single crochet. So single crochet into the next space and then the next one another six double crochets so one two three four 
two, three, four, five, and six. The yarn keeps getting tangled here. Six, and then in the next chain three, you single crochet, and you're just going to repeat that all the way around. So you do a single crochet, six double crochets, single crochet, six double crochet. So every other chain three space will have a six double crochets, and every other one will have a single crochet. And this creates this beautiful shell-like edging all the way around and you're going to do that all the way around and then you're going to do the exact same thing on your sleeve ends so you'll do the chain three single crochet and then the six double crochet single crochets around the edging and that will be your cardigan finished and then all that's left to do is to block it out slightly to even out the stitches and start wearing it okay so i hope that's helped any questions pop them down in the comments below um, but I hope I've explained everything for you. If not, I'm really sorry. And give me tips on what to do better next time. Okay, thank you then. Bye.